For more than 50 years, a simple rock and roll song has been synonymous with Ohio State. Hang On Sloopy topped charts in 1965. It's a hit that likely would have been forgotten, except for students and fans who adopted it as an unofficial anthem of their own. But why this song? Have you ever thought about how it came to be part of Ohio State's culture? The story of how Sloopy became a Buckeye might surprise you. Segregation was prominent in the music industry during the 1960s. Carl Fisher and his group, The Vibrations, sometimes weren't paid for the shows they played. He remembers performing on stages where black and white audiences were separated by a rope. And of course, they were the songs first recorded by black artists for R&B labels and later covered by white groups, marketed as pop music for white teens. A lot of times they wouldn't play black records on some of your uh, pop stations, but they would bring it down from too wild and put it out by a white act and it would sell. Twist and Shout and Hound Dog? The original artists never received the acclaim or commercial success of the Beatles or Elvis Presley. My Girl Sloopy is a lot like that. Carl Fisher first recorded it in 1964, a full year before the McCoy's rock and roll version hit number one. Most people have never heard of My Girl Sloopy. I didn't have any resentment against them, actually. We were just doing what artists do. They got a better pop sound. But I did like the groove that I always had, you know, with the Latin feel behind. So part of what I think the appeal musically of Hang On Sloopy is kind of more broadly the appeal of these these kinds of dance-oriented R&B tunes from the 1960s. Highly repetitive, um, you know, has, has a kind of simple... Uh, I mean, these are kind of, it's like four notes, <laughs> basically. It makes it easy to to hop from, you know, being a song that you might perform at a, at a dance club, at a rhythm and blues kind of club, to being something that you could perform in a rock club, to being something that you could arrange for, uh, for marching band. The person who arranged Sloopy for the Ohio State University marching band wasn't even a band member. John Tagenhorst was a student at Ohio State majoring in music. His professor and mentor, Charlie Spawn, was the director of the marching band. Charlie believed in giving some of his more talented students opportunities to arrange pieces for the band occasionally. At the Ohio State Fair on the loudspeakers, I heard Sloopy, and I think it was the McCoy's version, and I liked it. I asked Charlie Spawn, the director, if if I could do an arrangement for the band. And he said, the Ohio State Marching Band doesn't play that kind of stuff. Then I bugged him probably every week. I got a call from Charlie Spawn, and he said, go ahead and arrange the son of a gun, let's say. I said, when do you want it? Tomorrow morning. Okay, so I go home, have something to eat, and uh, start on this thing about 9.30. I wanted to do it in the key of G flat. G flat has six flats, and uh, it, it's a, you know, I was never to arrange anything in six flats, but I did, and uh, turned it in. Uh, Worry eyed the next day. They tried it Monday, and uh, Tuesday, a guy by the name of Fred Dart the assistant band director said the kids just love it, just love it. The audience went, went crazy. They, they loved it a lot. But it kept getting bigger and bigger. So to have a student actually write this arrangement that has become so popular, to have John Tagenhorst as a student at The Ohio State University in 1965 do this, I think is, is certainly fitting um, and, a, and a tribute to what this program really is all about. No one expected Hang On Sloopy to fire up fans the way it did in the shoe or to become a tradition in the decades to come. 
An affinity for the song extended to other stadiums and music education programs throughout the state. Sloopy was one of the first tunes that I always taught our, our students uh, when they were, you know, beginning in fifth grade. That was a, a tune that we occasionally would take out for them to play, and they all knew it, and they, they all got excited about playing it because it was something they knew, something that they were familiar with. So it's certainly something that has become really a part of our culture beyond just, you know, here at Ohio State. I think students all over the place have kind of grabbed hold of it. It became the state's official rock song in 1985. Hang on, Sloopy. A one-hit wonder that would likely have been forgotten if not for Ohio State students and fans. The familiar drum beats transport us across miles and years to Columbus, Ohio, to memories of football, friendship, and fun. I think when people hear Sloopy, they think of this older tradition, which is a lot of Ohio State football and the marching band, too. You have alumni, of course, coming back for games, and I think it brings a lot of the sense of nostalgia. And tradition. At the end of every third quarter, you can still count on the marching band and student section to fire up the crowd with Sloopy, just as Buckeyes have been doing since 1965. It's an honor, you know, to have had a part in it, but uh, I never thought of it in the context of the younger kids coming up and adopting that type of music and using it in that way. The fact that they enjoy it is enough for me. I just hope they keep the music alive.